Tell yourself, say, I carry God. I carry God. Carry God. Carry God. Carry God. Bible tells us, arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Verse 2, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy, of thy rising. And I just want to talk about how as believers, we've become so comfortable, you know, God has given us an instruction, right? He gave us an instruction in the prophets. He said, arise and shine. But what do we see? We have believers not doing anything. Not doing anything at all. You know, there are people out there dying people in darkness, people living in ignorance, and we are comfortable, and we are. So when you read the chapter before that, that's Isaiah 59, 9 to 10, it gives us a clear description of the kind of darkness that um, the prophet was talking about. He said it was a thick darkness, gross darkness the people, and so their minds were covered, like there was no light, there was no hope. Christ came. Christ came and brought salvation. And this salvation is a light. Hallelujah. And so in receiving that, he, he tells us to arise and shine. So what does it mean to arise? Right? What is our response to this call of God? Is to arise. Right? When we say arise, it don't necessarily mean that we're rising from the dead. And so we are dead, literally. So we are rising, right? We know that when Jesus Christ died, resurrected on the third day. He resurrected with him. So he's not talking about death in this sense that we die literally. But he's talking about ignorance, the lies, not knowing the truth, not knowing what the scripture says about you, your identity, who you are, what you carry, the work he's called you to do. He said to arise, get up from your seats, get up from your sleep, your slumber, Wasting time, marking time, procrastinating, telling yourself, oh, I can't do this, I'm too shy. Or, you know, giving so many excuses. Sometimes God opens doors. He gives us the room to, to speak this word, to preach the gospel to the people. And we shy away. In the name of, I don't know what to say. But you carry God. You carry the Holy Spirit. And he inspires you. He gives you the utterance to speak. And so when you don't have any words, because see, you sit down and you study the scriptures and you learn what God has said about you and what he has said to say to the world, you will have something to say. But because you don't do that, there's nothing to say. So sometimes we are asked questions and then we start fumbling and because of that, that is the excuse we give not to go out there and preach this gospel. Amen. What does Romans 12 to tell us? He said, and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is the will of God? That all men may be saved. That's what the scriptures have told us. That all men may be saved. That every man will receive salvation, no matter who the person is, black, white, Jew, Gentile, everyone will come to this salvation. Hallelujah. John 8, 32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. There's freedom in knowing the truth. There's freedom in knowing the truth, but we are not able to walk in this reality. We are not able to walk in this realm or dimension of truth because we don't know what the scriptures have said. Right? We don't know what the scriptures have said. And so when you read the scripture, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, he said, But we all with open face behold us in the glass. The glory of God are changed, are transformed from one level of glory to another. It is the scriptures that transform us. 
It is the scriptures that change us, right? You see, we've come to an age or like an era where it's like we have become so comfortable with what the world has defined as the standard of living. So God give us a mandate, God give us instructions, God give us values, he gave us standards, but we are not able to live in them. And so what the world has said is um, truth, is what we live by, right? And so they say it's okay to collaborate with um, secular musician to sing a song because it's gospel. How? How? How can I preach truth if I'm collaborating with What's the definition? What am I defining when I do that? Right? What am I telling people? Right? When I do that? Hallelujah. We need to set ourselves apart. You can't preach the gospel. Like you can't tell me that that is the way you can preach the gospel by by going to the club, right? And doing what they are doing. And then when you are done, you tell them that Jesus loves you. Which Jesus? Yes, he does love them, but more than that, he wants them to come out of darkness. He wants them to come out of darkness. And for them to be able to see these things, they need to see the example, right? We need to live that example. Jesus Christ didn't come and die, go through all the pain. We just celebrated Easter, right? We're all reminded in our churches what Christ went through for us to have this salvation, for us to have this reality, for us to walk in this freedom. It's free for everyone. All you need to do is what? Believe. As soon as you believe that Christ died for you and gave it to you, you are changed. And it doesn't end there. There is work to do. There is work to do. We need to continue the work that our Father started. You know, something I've been hearing, right, is how people say that the title Sons of God is for special people, right? And so you need to do something to end that title. That's not true. Even said something that this title is for them who have believed. And so if you've decided to believe or you've given your life to Jesus, you are a son of God. And it comes with responsibility. It's not just for you to, you know, relax and tell yourself I'm a son of God. And so every blessing, whatever that God has for me is mine. There's work to be done, right? Every day we see on social media what's going on this person is doing that and then they're all talking but nobody's saying the truth it's like and when one person decides to say it all of us in our minds were like oh but you didn't have to say it like that but truth is truth right truth is true we don't need to sugarcoat it or make it sound some way for them to you know say it as it is boldly confidently because you carry God and he is the one who's going to do the changing right amen so you want to close your eyes want to close your eyes and just think on these few words that has been spoken from what Aben has said to what I've just said. We need to stand for Jesus. We need to stand for Jesus. No matter the cost, no matter the hurt, no matter the pain, what didn't the apostles go through? What didn't Paul go through? He stood. There was one time he went to preach with a fellow disciple, right? A fellow apostle. They finished preaching. The people stoned them. Paul got up and went there again to preach the same gospel. And the people listened to him. So don't say that you've been doing this, but they've not been listening to you. You've been doing it, but they've not been hearing you. Go again. Keep going. Keep going. Hallelujah. I want to close eyes and just pray these prayers. And understanding who we are and what we, we carry. We understand that sometimes um, our strength may fail. But there's good news. That God's strength is perfected in our weakness. And so we don't rely on our strength to preach this gospel. We don't rely on our wisdom or understanding to preach this gospel. We rely on the scriptures, the truth of what God has said. That is what we rely on. And if we have the Holy Spirit, he's able to give us the utterance. He's able to inspire us as we boldly take the steps. As he leads the way, we follow him. And so he says, say this, you say it. He will bring that transformation into the people. So we are praying, God, strengthen us as we take our places as believers. We are tired of doing things the, the world, as the world has said we should do it. We can't be yoked with them.
believers, God. We need to stand out. Let's open up your mouth and just speak in tongues and say, Father, strengthen me. Strengthen me, God, tonight because my strength is failing me. There is work to be done, God. I can't sit on my seat and be comfortable. When people are dying, when people are confused, when people are in darkness and living in ignorance, oh God, when you call them for more, I can't sit down and say I'm comfortable where I am, oh God. Strengthen me, Holy Spirit. Father, we open up our spirit man to receive the strength in the name of Jesus. Indeed, the work is great. Indeed, the work is heavy. But you said the burden is suitable. It's suitable for us to carry. Help us, O Holy Spirit. In Kemano, with all seriousness, close your eyes and focus on God and say, Father, I'm tired of doing things the old way. I want to do it as you have said in the scriptures, in the name of Jesus. You inspire me, God. I don't say my words. I say your words. I don't say what I feel. I say what is true. In the name of Jesus. I don't fear rejection of the world. And rejection comes by the way. And accepted by Christ. And that is enough. You want to lift up your hands. We believe we have received strength from God. And so tonight we leave this place different people. We are going to preach this gospel. No matter what, if it costs us our jobs, costs us money, our family, our scholarships, whatever. What God has said is all we'll say.
church for some to get up and take their positions. There's no more room for procrastination. We must rise. Creation grows in anticipation for some to get up and take their positions. There's no more room for procrastination. You said creation grows and takes position. Sun to get up, sun to get up and take position. No more room, no more room, no more room. Shut down the ocean. We must rise. Hey, say creation. They're waiting for you. Hey, somebody's dying. Hey, come on, come on. Where's my freedom? You need to take it out there. Come by the name of Jesus. We carry God. 
if they leave me, that is okay. I'm content and complete in you, my God. I'm content and complete in you, my God. Yeah. I am on the Lord's side. Are you on the Lord's side? He said, Are you on my side? Harvest is plenty, the letters of you. Oh, oh. He's sending us for to go. And the harvest is plenty, the letters of But men in here are rising. We are going. Give the Lord a shout and say, I am going. It's more about information and so sorry. I'm preaching, but someone too is saying something else. And there's confusion in the minds of the people because everybody's saying something what they know. But that's why you're here. And so you're leaving with this understanding that I need to study the scriptures. I need to be intentional. I know what God is saying. And go and preach it. If you preach it, Trust me, transformation will come. You don't need to feel it to know it will come. Amen. 